Okay, so um, welcome to Collaborative Statistics. Uh, this is Chapter 6, the normal distribution. And so the normal distribution, what is it? It's a continuous distribution. It is the thing that we're going to focus on for the next four chapters. So it's very, very important to statistics. Um, it's a bell-shaped curve, a uh, bell curve. Uh, you, um, you'll see we'll see it in a couple seconds but it is something we are going to focus on for pretty much the rest of the semester uh, so we need to understand it very well and how to use it um, as we said it's a continuous distribution so this is we're taking ideas uh, still from last chapter and bringing them into this chapter so remember last chapter was about continuous distributions and we talked looked at the bus, um, uh, Poisson and the binomial we needed to look these things up so here we're gonna. This is something we're gonna have to look up. It's a symmetrical curve. It's bell shaped. It's symmetrical. We draw a line down the middle of it at the mean. Uh, they're exactly folded over. It's exactly the same. Um, the thing that's important to talk about the spread of, the, of this curve will be the standard deviation. Okay. Um, so we could have two. Uh, s normal curves, both of the same mean, in different shapes because of the standard deviation. Um, the standard normal distribution is um, basically when I mentioned standardizing the uh, data. Um, this allows us to bring it down to a specific value. And so we do this and it gets a mean of mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. This is there's a table that we use to look up uh, all normal curves. This is the standardized normal distribution, okay? And I will show you that in a second. Oop, wrong way. So here it is. This is a standardized normal Z. So it's um, measure the Z score is what we're going to be looking up when we have a formula. We've we looked at it before in like chapter two, I think we talked about you know correct finding a Z score in standard deviation. Um, this allows us to measure how far something is within in standard deviations. So the Z score is just how many standard deviations above or below the mean a value is. Um, the standardized normal curve, um, which is uh, this is the normal curve, this would have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So this would be one value. This is two and this is three. Negative one, negative two, negative three. See we multiply by the standard deviations. Um, and the Z scores allow us to compare data. Just as we did with chapter, uh, chapter two, where we said, "Well, gee, is Mary did Mary do better than Lucy on our test, where they had um, um, both of them had a uh, one had a 70 and one had a 75, but the means were different and the standard deviations were different. So we looked to see how much better or how much worse somebody did comparatively, and so this allows us to do that. So again, here's our formula: z is equal to the value x whatever x is, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And it's built upon the empirical rule. I know we just talked about this um, in chapter 2 again. Uh, remember we had Chebchev's and then we had the empirical rule, the 68, 95, 99.7. This is the rule. So one standard deviation between here and here, 68, and it's really 68.14, but it's close enough to say 68% of the population is here. This is 34%. This is 34%. They're evenly distributed. This is 95% of the data is between here and here. This is where the idea of outliers come from. Because that means that this here is only 2.5% and this here is only 2.5% of all data. So that's why we can say that that's unusual, probably not likely to happen uh, randomly. Um, they have to be, you know, just by default. So accidentally if we find something out in these spaces there's not a lot of large percentage of those chance of those things happening three standard deviations from here to here is 99.7 percent so that's almost everything and we'll never get all of it because we you know this continues on this is an it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller and more and more zeros as we go along um, so we very seldom tend to think of anything occurring after three uh, standard deviations and almost nothing occurs after four standard deviations but you can do math and find something that's 
17 standard deviations above the mean and it's you know it has it's all zeros for you know a long time but you know it, there's still a small chance of something being there so this is what the standard deviation uh, this the standard curve or bell curve z score z curve all look like so um the big thing that we're going to be doing is trying to figure out how much space is under the curve and we can find out, you know, what's to the left of a line, or what is to the right of a line. Okay, and to do this, it's, it's the same thing. We're probably going to use our calculator, but we have a table. We f first draw a curve, find out what our z value, put our mean in. Okay, we find our standard deviation. Then we calculate a value. You know, here we we are looking for this 162. Well, we know it's over here, and we want to know what's the chance of it being less than 162. What is the chance of this being bigger than 177? So we would do those out and find our z values, and then we can look them up on this table here. And this table, we look down and go, okay, well, it this one. Let's say it was negative 1.6. So we'd go to negative 1.62. All right, so negative 1.62, we'd come across and we'd say, oh, this is the probability that it's this side, and this is always giving us to the left. If we want to find to the right of something, we subtract the value from 1, and that would give us how much is to the right of it by doing it by hand. We're going to use a calculator. All right, so here they're asking the probability that something is greater than 145 based on the fact that the mean is 100 and the standard deviation is 15. So we plug those in. So you notice they drew the curve. And what's the probability that's over here? Well, we need to put in our in our calculator. We have normal CDF. Okay, we go to second distribution. That we find normal. I think it's the first one and it'll put a parenthesis. We put the lower bound, which is 145. The upper bound, which is, you know, a one with lots of zeros, or here they put, you know, 9,999. You just want to make sure it's a big number. Okay, what is the mean and what is the standard deviation? And it will find out for you, it will give you this value, 0 0.0013. Well, now if they want it percent, we have to make sure we write down the answer. So. It would be point here in this case one three five percent. Okay. If we want to find um, the next thing here, it talks about uh, what value. Um, this is a different problem. That doesn't go to this. <laughs> Very strange. If they want to find between two things. Okay, we would just use these two values. So this would be our lower bound, and this would be our upper bound. And this looks like, and it's a normal distribution. The standard normal so our mean is zero, our standard deviation is one. If we're doing this, we're trying to find well, what value is the 60th, is 60 percent of the data, you know, less than? Well, again, we go to second vars, and we bring up this distribution, and we do inverse norm. Okay, and this talks about this is the percentile formula we're going to see, and we put in our area that's under the curve. So 60% of below what value? What is our mean and what is our standard deviation? And we would get an answer. Okay, and so we're going to see some formulas here. This is how we write the you know standard distribution. You know, x is represented as the normal curve. Parentheses we put the mean and the standard deviation. If we've so make sure you put your numbers down. If it's been normalized, if it's the standard normal probability, then the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. Okay, and notice here they capitalized the z. Okay, so this is the standard or normal curve in this case. Okay, um, we don't see this one that often, but we will see. You will be writing this one a lot. Okay. That's the difference. I just wanted to show you the difference between the two. This here was the thing where we just did where we were finding our percent below the curve. Well, if we're trying to find the percentile you know below a curve, that percentile is going to give us mean plus their z score times the standard deviation. And 
as I showed you here, we use just use this formula and say, okay, we know our percentile, here's our mean, here's our standard deviation, we're going to really find out how many, what the z-score of this is, and we would then do that math. But, you know, if we were to look on the table here, we could find 60%, um, yeah, I can zoom in, yes. Uh, 60% is right between these two numbers, so uh, 0.26, okay? So we would take 0.26, multiply it by our standard deviation, add it to the mean. That would give us the value that is less than that, okay? In this case here, we just plug it into our calculator, we come up with the value. But that gives us the percentile, so that's formula three that they looked at. I don't know why they put them in this form, this order, it seems like a weird thing. And then the z-score, which is what we're usually looking up, is again, z-score is equal to the value that we've been given minus our mean divided by our standard deviation. And so you can kind of see where these two things come from there. We have our, our k value, we can call this x, I suppose, and then we could see that, yeah, all right, those things work multiply by the standard deviation, add the mean. So they work back out. Okay, so that's everything in chapter six quickly, um, and I will see you in class.